and a Pilates reformer that stores upright. So that okay. way I have room for activities. You're being modest. That's way more toys than we have in here. Like we got a big TV and some cameras. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you yeah. just named like nine things. <laughs> good morning, internet and Arlington and Ronan. I always say good morning to Ronan. I'm going to say good morning to someone named Jennifer today. Someone named Jennifer. That is not a real person. I'm just hoping statistically someone named Jennifer is watching. Hopefully. And they're going to feel, you know, appreciated. Um, that, that's my new thing. We'll just, we'll thank someone for watching every day. <laughs> not a real person, but someone. I, I was going to say, just like uh, on Thursday, we were saying that how many Jeffs there are in the world. Yes. Not a lot of Ronins. Presumably, there's a lot of Jennifers. There are a assume. lot of Jennifers. Now, yes. Let me ask you, when you were in school, Ronan, mm -hmm. what was the percentage of Jennifers in the school? Uh, like, how many Jennifers did you know? I have no clue. Well, like, That's a yes. lot? Did you know any? Did you know any Jennifers? I... I don't know for sure. Okay, well, that means that has gone down. Uh, uh, because uh, I was born in 1980, okay. and approximately 5% of the girls I knew were named Jennifer. <laughs> it was an incredibly common name from like 1975 to maybe 90 or 85, somewhere in the late 80s. Um, there are a lot of, um, you know, uh, elder millennial <laughs> Jennifers out there. Um, yeah, pe people my age know many, many Jennifers. I have a, a Jennifer cousin. Mm -hmm. I, I can think of right off the bat, three Jennifers that I knew in school. And that's just the ones I remember 25 <laughs> yeah. years later. That means there was a lot of them. So anyway, me saying Jennifer, pretty good call. I, I, I was going to say, like right now, I know like my girlfriend's mom is Jennifer. My mm -hmm. my dad's girlfriend is Jennifer. But like, like I, like yeah, see, of those what, two, I can't really think of any more. Well, but, but yeah. once you once you jumped up to my generation, <laughs> you had no problem. <laughs> that was super easy for you. <laughs> Anyway, speaking of uh, people not named Jennifer, which I now am, <laughs> we have a guest today, Ronan. Did you know that? Uh, well, I do now. You do now? Yeah. Yes. I, I like to pretend that they somehow sneak in here without you knowing, but I, <laughs> I think probably you noticed. Uh, here, let's take a look for the, the internet audience. We have a local business owner and a physical therapist, uh, Dr. Candace Harding. Did I say all of that right? You did say all of that right. <laughs> I yes. did my best. <laughs> um, for everyone watching, we have mostly been talking to Arlington business owners. Mm -hmm. uh, this is another case, though, of an actual Venture X neighbor. Yes. Our, uh, we started out with an uh, accountant named Jay, who's okay. our, our neighbor this way. Uh, here, just want everyone to know, Jay is that way, and <laughs> Candace is that way. Yes. <laughs> so if we walk <laughs> past the kitchen to the very end by mm -hmm. the balcony. Correct. That's where you are. Yes, a wonderful view. But, uh, yeah, you got a window. We yeah. yes, we don't know what the weather is in here. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, but I mean it's a really cool setup. Uh well, you have a setup too though cuz I I've walked by and I haven't been in your <laughs> office yet, but I've seen stuff. What yes. ta tables? I don't know. What, yeah. What's going on in there? Yeah, so um I, I guess I don't technically have tons of equipment. Uh there are different schools of thought when it comes to um orthopedics or like pain, muscle, joint related mm -hmm. physical therapists in that specific um, niche of do we use a lot of machines or are we more like body weight focused and then gradually loading with like bars and kettlebells and stuff like that. Yeah. I, I fall on that side. Okay. So um, I have a high low table, which is really awesome because I'm only five feet tall. And sometimes Does that mean it changes heights. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I can bring it up. I can lower it down. And then that way I can protect my own body mechanics so that I can keep helping people for as long if it's as good enough I for dentists. To. It's good enough for you. Right. Exactly. So <laughs> high low table. Um, I have a really fancy treadmill that inclines and declines. I've never oh. seen that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Features. Um, and then I have a flywheel bike and um, an infrared sauna and a Pilates reformer that stores upright. So that okay. way I have room for activities. You're being modest. That's way more toys than we have in here. Like we got a big TV and some cameras. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you yeah. just named like nine things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So those are the big things. Those are the big things. And then obviously like I'm, I think really good at making it look like there's not a lot of stuff in the space. And oh, then I'm also like pulling good. stuff out and people are like, where's all of that coming from? <laughs> like, wouldn't you like to know? It's Storage. <laughs> good use of the space. Yes, so, exactly. I do know your office has a pillar in it. Yes. Are, are you making use of that to hide things? Is that uh, a... kind of, yeah. So, um, the infrared sauna, it's actually like a portable unit. Mm -hmm. We'll say that loosely because I'm not <laughs> putting it on my back and carrying it anywhere. Um, but it's like, two tube kind of pieces okay. like a smaller one and a bigger one and so they stand upright in storage and then when i want to actually use the sauna then i can actually lay out a pad that has infrared light heat uh, 
whatever infrared that, that waves is... are. Um, yeah. And then <laughs> the, the two tube pieces like overlay one another and they literally become a tube. So I can lay it out in the floor when we need to use it. But then otherwise it's like hiding on one side of the pillar. That's really awesome. awesome. <laughs> Let me back up to my own ignorance. Physical therapy. <laughs> yes. In my mind, you have when something's really wrong, mm -hmm. you go to the doctor. And then when it's not quite so wrong, you go to the physical therapist ah. until it's not wrong at all. That's my understanding. Did I get Ooh. close at all? <laughs> yes, in terms of what a lot of people think. And I'm very glad you brought that up. Um, so in the Commonwealth of Virginia, and this is actually a, a new change as of July 1st, so really exciting. Um, we have completely unrestricted direct access as providers now. Okay. So even if something is like pretty darn wrong, like you can still come <laughs> see us if you think it is a more musculoskeletal condition. Mm -hmm. um, and then if things are more concerning, like I do tons of different tests and measures to figure out what's causing someone's discomfort. If there are red flags, I'm not able to reproduce your pain, then I say, okay, yeah, no, you need to go see your physician. Okay. You know, um, but for so many things, people might go to their primary care thinking that's where they have to start, knowing that they're going to get a script for physical therapy. So actually you can just skip that first step and come to the physical therapist. And if we need okay. to send you back, we absolutely will. So in Ronan and Mai's case, our, both of our <laughs> experience with physical therapists, mine was after knee surgery. Okay. And his was after a automobile decided that where his bike was was where it wanted to be. Yes. Uh, so in both cases, we you didn't... You do need the surgeon yeah, to do the surgery. We, we didn't yeah. really think about it in, in that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, describe a person who is not uh, forced into that situation. Right. Who's someone that may, uh, you know, optionally come to you what what is that person like what why are they coming to you okay so there's it's kind of a twofold answer in terms of general population and then also me specifically mm -hmm. um so general population could be anything like my shoulder hurts when i reach overhead or like i have trouble sleeping on my side because my shoulder hurts or my back yeah. hurts or my hip hurts pretty much fill in the blank with something hurts and those are the people who knowingly, maybe more so, will say, I should go see a physical therapist. Yeah. Um, then in terms of me specifically, I am also gearing towards messaging that you don't have to wait until it's constantly hurting. Mm -hmm. You know, like maybe you enjoy going to F45 because that's down the street. We'll say F45. And it's a gym, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a circuit training, cardio, strength training workout. Okay. Um, so people might do a lot of things there that they don't do and they're just day-to-day -day interactions. And it's the only time that they realize that their knee feels a little off. Right. Come see me when you notice that it's feeling <laughs> a little off just when you're working out heavy as opposed to waiting for it to be... It creeps into your daily life. <laughs> yes, yes. Now all of a sudden it hurts to go up and down the stairs. I'm happy to work with you once that's the problem too. But if we can catch you before it's giving you issues with stairs, then like, let's do that. <laughs> okay, so kind of preventative. So mm -hmm. that, that leads into, I, I think I heard you say you do stuff at the gyms, right? Like you're mm -hmm. not, you, you got an office up here, yeah. but then you do, what is it, workshops or lectures or what, what yeah. do you do down there? Yeah, I do workshops. Um, and so that could be, and actually it is always based on the format of the place I'm going to. So um, I often go to a yoga studio because I off, like I teach yoga on the weekends. Mm -hmm. um, so yoga is a thing. Uh, so I might go to the yoga studio and do a workshop on like healthy spine mobility. And then that way we're using things that people are familiar with in the yoga world to help them support their backs and again, prevent potential issues in the future. Yeah. Um, especially if we can pair it with postures in yoga that are more likely to cause issues. And I can help them do things in a way that it's less likely to cause issues, then they're going to continue practicing longer, you know, and healthier. Um, but then if I'm going to, again, like an F45 place, it might be a workshop on ankle mechanics and how to jump correctly. <laughs> like what's going on at your hips and your knee and your ankle so that you're absorbing shock well. Yeah. Um, but then otherwise, sometimes I just do like free screening events where people at one of those locations are able to sign up for like a 20 minute window with me, at which point they can tell me whatever they 
have going on or questions that they might have that aren't necessarily so serious that they're like, Need an oh, appointment. Yeah. right, exactly. Then I'm there and I'm able to start making relationships with people in the community. Is there a common, uh, like, like something you hear a lot in those, like people are always saying this one thing or is it just complete grab bag? It is a little bit of a grab bag, but I will say knees, hips, and shoulders. I mean, outside of low back pain, yeah. literally low back pain is the most common hmm. prevalent thing for people over the age of 25. Makes sense. Um, but so outside of back pain, um, knee, hip, and shoulder. Uh, but I think it's because, especially the shoulder, I, I'm not going to nerd out about this, um, <laughs> is a really complex joint. Like there's actually five separate joints that are part of our wow. shoulder moving successfully. Wow. So if any one like muscle isn't actually doing its job to move a joint the way it's supposed to, then over time, especially if you are doing some like heavier activities, whether that's even like mowing the grass or you do odd jobs around your house, but they require more of like this or this and, you know, it gets repetitive. Yeah. Um, and then that's when like shoulder things might start to creep in. Um, and then as for hips and knees, they're very tied together in that our hips actually control where our knees go in space. Oh. So if you ever were to watch someone squat or maybe even do stairs and you see their knee angling inward a little bit, it's actually a hip weakness that's causing that now, see, knee. What you're saying there leads me to an interesting thought. Um, I had, I, well, I had originally thought as physical therapist as something you do after surgery ah, yeah, <laughs> and now yeah. you're saying like well maybe if something's not working right mm -hmm. let's go down even further down the chain i just took my car in and said check it out right yes should could someone come do an appointment where like everything's fine but watch me walk <laughs> up and down the stairs yes. <laughs> like like you can watch someone and be like hey guess what you're walking upstairs wrong like that's a thing right like yes. this is just occurring to me <laughs> yes that's entirely Exactly. I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, well, you um, led me to it. But yeah, so that is entirely the point. Our bodies are literally like a house of cards. Everything is mm. somewhat dependent on something else. Even as distant as like your foot and ankle to your shoulder. There are different structures, tissues, again, not going to nerd out, <laughs> that indirectly impact one another. And so if there's anything that's just a little off, it's worth knowing and taking some steps to preempt it becoming a bigger thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, our bodies are basically like cars. And if we take our cars in <laughs> to get like an oil change and a tune up every 3000 miles or so, then why don't we do things a little bit more proactively for our bodies? Well, Trying to do better at both. Um, <laughs> my poor car. That's um, what I said. Or so for I those know. of us that maybe push it to six thousand miles. I had to. I had to. I had to give them uh, quite a long list of uh, things to look at this morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, oh, just this morning. It's yeah, fresh. Yeah. No, I just just dropped it off. So I, I, don't, I don't even know if it's fixable yet. They may call back and be like, forget Scrap it. it. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. But uh, yeah, that's not not the situation yet. you want to get to with your your body. So. Right. Exactly. So if we can avoid surgery then we should. Yes. Yeah. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. If you need surgery, you need surgery. What, uh, <laughs> tell, I, I've said your name, but where can people find you? Where, where on the internet do they go? Ooh, okay. So yes, um, I can be found at www. or HTTPS. I don't think you, <laughs> I don't think you have to do any of that anymore. I, I think the computer just really? knows. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm also showing my age. I look really young. I like to think, um, but I am also a millennial, like not, not 80s millennial, but I feel like this perfect bubble of like, I know right what life middle. was like before the internet took over everything. Yep. My childhood was still outside. Um, but yeah, so, ooh, where was I? Internet, my website, <laughs> thrivewithdrc.com. Okay. With drc.com. All right. And, yeah. uh, and if anyone, for some reason hates websites. Yeah. Um, you just find uh, VentureX here in Arlington. Mm -hmm. Come up to the seventh floor. Yep. And, and ask at the reception desk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I even have some cards on the little, like, turnstile oh, cool. that's at the yeah, front we, desk, Yeah, we have too. our little uh, pictures of the studio out there. 
Yeah. You come, you come into the lobby there, and we all brag about ourselves. <laughs> right, pretty much. That's what it, we're all here for, right? But uh, no, internet probably more convenient. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, um, this is awesome. I love, uh, love different, learning different things. And mm-hmm. as you could see uh, through these last ten minutes, I learned a lot. <laughs> and really great questions. And I'm pretty sure everybody who happens to listen would also be like, "Oh, wow, that was a really great question." I didn't know. <laughs> May- maybe I, uh, I try. <laughs> Before you go, though, um, when it's just me and Ronan, Ronan has a, a fun article to show up uh, on the TV here, mm-hmm. and I'd love for you to take a look with me okay, today. Okay, great. Uh, I never know what we're going to see. So, Ronan, uh, go ahead and show us today's article. So, hopefully it's fun. It's always fun. An, <laughs> an otter turned outlaw continues to evade wildlife officials in Santa Cruz. Whoa. Okay, I got a lot of questions. <laughs> One, what is an outlaw? What, what does that mean? And wow. number two, uh, wildlife officials, are they trying to arrest him? Um, <laughs> uh, I, yeah, scroll down. I need to know more. <laughs> <laughs> An otter in California is on the run from local and federal authorities <laughs> wanted for aggressively confronting locals and stealing surfboards at a popular beach. Yep. Okay, this is wild. This is a five-year-old female otter known officially as Otter 841. Okay, so first of all, <laughs> this is reminding me of Lilo and Stitch. Yes. This yeah. is uh, Otter number 841 has yep. been deemed a public safety risk. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Unusually, Unusually aggressive behavior. Yep. And as you can see by Whoa. pictures. <laughs> yeah, I think if I, I think otters are very cool, but I think if I were out on a surfboard, that would cause me to jump away as well. Yeah, and then I believe there's another one there. Yep. <laughs> About oh a still one. <laughs> All right. These are awesome photos, Ronan. Um, usually we have articles where it's like, oh, I wonder what that looks like. And <laughs> we know there, exactly. There we go. <laughs> move my microphone there. There we can see. Yep. There's the otter aggressively <laughs> stealing a surfboard. Okay, so here, go go down more. They they failed to catch it? Uh, uh, to my knowledge, yes. Yeah, but yeah. That's the weird part to me. I feel like an and otter needs a boat and a net. There has been signs <laughs> as well. Aggressive sea otter. <laughs> Keep away from marine wildlife. That is so funny. I love this. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm definitely on team otter here. I hope she continues to terrorize the beach. Yep. And, I mean, you know, it doesn't sound like she's hurt anyone yet. Right. If she starts, like, biting children, then maybe I'll take back my, my opinion. But as long as she's just stealing surfboards, you go, Otter. <laughs> yep. There's been several <laughs> memes in the community, or the community talking about keeping this oh, Otter sure. free. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is how, you, how you raise a hero. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, this is, this is the, uh, the anti-hero everyone loves. Um, surfboard stealing Otter. Yep. <laughs> Well, I'm going to be staying out of the water this summer. <laughs> At least <laughs> in, in Santa case. Cruz. <laughs> yes, but you never know. They, they could be anywhere. Right. <laughs> Apparently. Okay. Thank you for that, Ronan. <laughs> of course. Great way to start the week. Um, That's what I'm here for. For, uh, for everyone watching, uh, thank you for joining us, and thank you for joining us. Yeah. And uh, we will be back soon with uh, more otter-related news. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me. Thanks. Bye.